In this video, healing for healers is my gift for you, the healers. Because who else heals the healers? And what are the dangers that come with the territory of being a healer? And uh, most of my clients you know, are already teachers or healers of some kind. And many of them are on the way of becoming a light bringer in their own way, like a baker that learns to infuse their goods with a healing love, or like a hairstylist you know, that learns to clear the crown truckers of their clients, or an office worker that clears the portals and energies in the cafeteria and the office spaces, and so on. So the guided meditation is especially for anybody working with the public. We can all be healers in different ways. We can all be healers in different ways. We can all be healers in different ways. You know, there are cups that are healers, you know, to discordant households, or maybe even entire communities. So, in the following guided meditation, we shall gain insight into what is affecting us on the public or our clients, and then we give our own high self and spirit guides permission, you know, to clear it. And as a result, you should feel lighter, you know, more whole, and, you know, have this permagrin on your face. Well, um, you know, this is a free will universe, so you have to give permission um, by saying Amen, yes, you nod your head, or you just grunt, hmm? <clears throat> you know, to show that you are aligned, you know, with my intent and prayer, you know, you, every time I say Amen. And if you're sensitive, you should uh, then feel a buzz in your force field um, within about five seconds. Okay, so if you listen to the podcast, you know, no driving now, this is going to super space you out. Not a good idea. Um, otherwise, um, you know, just uh, close your eyes. So we ask that everything that happens in and from this session here, from this meditation, is going to be for the highest good, in divine harmony with the mouse benefit outcomes. Ah. Very, very important to always be protected. Mm -hmm. And we also asked Absolute Source and the Divine Protectors like Archangel Michael or other beings, you know, that you trust that are in alignment with Source to guide and protect us. You know, in this meditation, of course, your own High Self, your own Soul Aspects and your Spirit Guides and Guardian Angels. You so-called spiritual entourage, I call this spirit guides. We ask that they guide us and protect us and give us strong signs. Um, um, and now it's kind of kicking in. And just think and smile. Don't be rude. Always smile in front of divinity that opens you up to love. And today we are going the quick way. This means, um, you know, very fast charge up connecting with the source. Let's give it a try. Um, some of you may be able to do this quite fast, but just keep on trying. And, you know, there is no wrong way. The more you do it, the better you get at it. So imagine that you're wrong in the love through your breath, through your head from Milky Way Galaxy and through your root chakra and through your legs from the Earth Mother simultaneously into your heart. As if you are like an hourglass and pulling the stuff in from top and bottom into your little center there, yes. And smile and really strongly inhale this and we ask the spirit guides the beings of love and light that assist us to clear any resistances in our grounding and in our crown chakra connection. Um, um. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Deep inhale, all the way in. Quite rough. And then smile and just keep this visualization and you probably feel there's quite a bus building in your hand. Now really make sure you smile and we are addressing absolute source of everything and we are asking for you know, big grace. Big grace here. We ask that a portal be opened in our heart. Which portals us straight with the wormhole to the love and light of source. You know, you Hindus have seen pictures of like this Hanuman with his heart open or Mother Mary or Lord Jesus with their heart open. No reason to have open heart surgery here. Let's just imagine a nice portal like SG1 with a beautiful wormhole or cornucopia. Or just focus on the love of the sweetness, focus on the sweetness and smile, without a smile you will not be able to experience love, sorry mm -hmm. and every time you feel this love coming in in your mind, be grateful mm -hmm. just maybe think thank you or think I love you Mm -hmm. And just keeping this love, keep pulling that love into this reality. It's a medicine, it's not a reward. The more you get, the more you start feeling like a good person. <laughs> Very simple. Becoming a good person may take a little longer. And now we ask that our subtle bodies and even our physical bodies all the way down to the genetic code be giving a healing and an update of the latest divine blueprint for us. Of course, High Self can supervise and give permission. Amen. And smile. And you probably feel some shifts in your force field. Mm -hmm. Let's keep on smiling and to bring in, you know, this love from source. Mm -hmm. Very regularly, yes. Thank you very much. And now we also ask that our high selves, this means our male aspect, our divine female aspect, our Christ aspect, that they all be giving a healing now from even higher aspects of our soul or divinity, and then also the proper updates for the latest and best divine blueprints for them. Um, um, um. And keep them inhaling the source love, or if you cannot connect with this, just pull in the love from heaven and earth. That's plenty good. <laughs> and now we also request that our spirit guides, of course only if they agree to it, receive a healing on their level and also the upgrades of the latest divine blueprint for them of their level. And if they want to, or maybe a shift change. Some of them are sick and tired of their job, they want to promote, they want to retire, others are eager, you know, latest tech, latest updates. So we, we also, you know, allow for a shift change if it's for the highest good. Um, um, um. And while these processes are going on, we ask um, for a security check um, to sniff out and bust any double agents and saboteurs that have snuck in with our spirit guides. Please do so now. Amen. 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 
And now we ask that our own divine aspect, whether it's your male high self or female high self, or your Christ successor, either be in front of you and reveals himself in front of you, or just steps into your body, which will most likely be more like a healing aspect, where you feel lighter and more expanded, taller in your shoulders, you might say. Please do so now. Um, Mm-hmm. Make sure you smile, you probably feel an uplift, mm-hmm. more hard, more fulgent, wonderful. Mm-hmm. To send some source love to this presence as a tester. Yeah, if the love is being returned and all the thing doesn't squirm. You know, continue. Otherwise, ask for protection or ask for your real high self to be dead. Amen. And, um, uh, yes, you know, from your high self can be anything from a thumbs up, nod, head shaking, you know, stuff like this. And what I really like is a, a yes is a feeling from the heart chakra to the head, like an uppity feeling, it feels like this. If your high self give you one now, amen. And to know there's a feeling um, from, you know, your heart chakra energy going to your feet like a downer, it would feel like this. And have your high self um, give you a strong no now, amen. Okay, and of course, as answers, you can take any, you know, scenes that pop into your mind, memory. You know, all these things that are suddenly appear after asking a question, I would definitely take as an answer, maybe in the terms of free association. I mean, don't mortgage the house on it, you know, or <laughs> invest on the stock market on it. Um, but it's, I think, a good guidance. So first of all, um, it's just, well, this might be a little scary, but, um, you know, this happens quite a lot. So, as a potent healer, you know, we uh, definitely um, sometimes uh, make enemies, you know, of the enemies of our clients, you know, because the enemies of our clients, um, whether these are discarnates, you know, or so-called ancestors from others, or um, other beings, nature beings, like gnomes, hobgoblins, um, or other beings that were heavily offended, you know, by this person, um, or just a dark, uh, vampiristic, you know, masters, you know, that were keeping this person as a cattle, you know, to feed a luge of them. So they don't like, um, you know, when this drama is being removed you know, from their, from your clients, you know, and so they might, um, you know, mess with you and attack you in some way. Let's ask your high self, is this the case with you? Yes or no? And let's see um, how much of that suffering <laughs> is, um, you know, coming from, you know, ticked off um, enemies of your clients. How much percent? Mm-hmm. Of course, there is no reason to accept this. So we asked our high self and spirit guides to please, you know, clear. Um, these attacks from these dark beings, from the lords and masters. Amen, 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 and take those beings to the courts of divine justice. I don't think this is allowed, you know, so let's call in the cops, so to say, amen. And yeah, it's starting to feel a little lighter <laughs> for many of you. Mm-hmm.
and of course as empath we feel the emotions and the pain of our clients in many cases and many times we also pick up this dark chi either by osmosis and of course if you are a massage therapist you know that's very easy to pick up stuff from people you know or if you have physical contact you know or if you're shedding chi like crazy and um, you know, this can attach to you. I mean, I had stuff attached to me from one massage therapist that was doing eight massages a day, was never doing any purification. And I mean, as soon as I touched that woman, uh, you know, I got a headache. I should have just walked away. You know? and we have some self-love. And it took me uh, you know, nearly a year to get all these toxins out of me. I mean, she looked, uh, you know, kind of greenish in the face. You I could see it. You know, as I said, I should have just walked away. Mm -hmm. But uh, so this can happen, and this probably has happened a lot. So, um, are you carrying a lot of other people's dark chi from your client? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. And you like to have this cleared now? Amen, amen, amen. And you could even be like a postmistress, you know, or postmaster. Then, you know, you, every day you have, you know, lots of people, you know, mentally pressuring you to work faster. <laughs> and so um, there can also be a chi transfer like that. You know, you like to have this cleared also. Um, um, um. Now many times when we do healing, maybe Reiki or hands-on healing or massage therapy you know, or even you know, other things like a hairdresser or just being in front of a person across the counter or whatever, um, we might be using our own chi to help them. You know, especially when they're sick or elderly and they need life force and they're ah, this nice old man and they just keep on talking and talking and talking you know and you are getting drained and they just get really enlivened you know so they're using your chi or you're giving your chi you know sometimes this is good you can save lives but um, <laughs> when you have a lot of contact with people you know that's not good and on the other hand, you should also not be using your personal chi to give to people, you know, you give the chi of the life force from source, from God, that you access through this portal in your heart or from the earth or from the heavens, you know, from huge beings or from Milky Way galaxy or from the elements, you know, this is the way of the healer, you know, or ask Jesus, you know, run those energies or just you know, you don't want to use your personal energies. You know, how much do we have <laughs> as a human? You know, we are batteries, but not that big. So we better to plug into bigger, bigger batteries. So wherever we used our own chi with others, we like to have this purified and return to us now. Amen, amen, amen. Mm -hmm. And when you're worried about like abandoning customers, you ask that they be hooked up to you know, the love of source, so they do not have a withdrawal symptoms. Um. Now, believe it or not, um, when you talk to people and listen to them singing their blues, and we might be picking up their burden and even their karma. I mean, I know people that after every third second, they ask you for confirmation. You know, whether their opinion is correct or not. Isn't that right? You know, and then you're supposed to say yes or get into a real big argument. <laughs> So anytime you say yes, you basically agree to their point of view and, you know, you might open yourself up of learning those lessons, you know, if these are like really backwards, you know, or wrong things that you are agreeing to out of politeness, 
you know, so you can earn karma just by you know, hanging out in the green with, with people that are just off. Mm -hmm. Also, um, you know, um, sometimes helping people that are really not deserving, it seems, and, you know, uh, <laughs> trying to push it, you know, um, that can also be, you know, giving you some karma or some anger, you know, where you're not being protected because, you know, you're not supposed to do so. And, you know, I lost a tooth over that. <laughs> Not, I mean, not punched out, you know, energetically. So, um, you know, it's uh, very important to be uh, neutral, you know, let source do the work. Um, we are just the transistor here. So we ask that all these burdens and karmas it be picked up, you know, as healers or in just contact with the public picked up now. Uh, um, Now, believe it or not, um, you can pick up entities also from other people, you know, especially again as a healer, especially as a healer, and because suddenly you have more light you know, and uh, <laughs> your clients, they probably suck pretty dry and so many, you know, like to jump onto you and then maybe even affect and jump onto other people. You know, it's a possibility and uh, quite uh, likely, depending on the sophistication of um, those entities uh, that are there. Um, especially if you're kind of sick and your force field is down, or if you're very open, and, you know, maybe too little Poliana-ish, you know, they can get into you. You know, maybe taking them a lot of compassion out of, on a subconscious level. Um, these things, they can look like little gargoyles, like spider-like beings, or like this iconic attachment. Um, they have quite many tentacles, so to say, and they like to attach to the head, and travel in the gallbladder meridian. Um, they are kind of rat-like beings, you know, I mean, it's their consciousness. They're kind of smart, but not, you know, super smart, you know, good enough for what they're doing. So there are all kinds of um, beings like this. Um, are you, do you have attachments of um, predators like this? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. And um, can we have those cleared now, pretty now? Amen. Now, when you feel you're not getting a lot lighter, <laughs> that's probably a sign that you got plucked by entities. I like to call them critters. Critters. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot worse than critters or than most critters are ghosts. You know, it means discarnates from others. Mm. When they jump over to you, this would be hitchhikers or probably nothing karmic. Unless that is from a past lifetime that you had together with your client, I mean that can happen too. You know, so you gotta know how to deal with ghosts if you're a decent healer, <laughs> or you're like in trouble on the long run. Mm -hmm. So again, um, you know, some ghosts they like to attach to the one that has more light, mm -hmm. or they are also attached to the darkness unless you have cleared all your darkness. You know, if you have some lingering there in the basement in your heart, maybe they can attach to this. So, are there any ghosts attached to you that you picked up from your clients or other hitchhikers? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. And you like to have them cleared, even if you didn't get an hour <laughs> here in days hiding. And we like to have them cleared, let's agree, you know, no harm done. You know, bring them to the Arcturian love healer at the Sensing Temple, they know what to do with it. Hmm? So, many times, when we are not able to help our clients, 
This could be in the more medical, you know, physical field or on the emotional level. You know, or shifting calm around or you know getting harassed <laughs> by black magic or spirits. Mm. We may feel guilty, you know, for not doing so. Uh, and um, you know, this happens. You know, probably lots of doctors and nurses, you know, when their clients die on them, you know, they feel guilty. This means they think they failed. Now, that's not, of course not always the case. You know, we are again not the doers, and when you dig deeper, there are many reasons that these people cannot be helped. You know, sometimes they have clients and you know, I mean, they have to, you know, have to work a long time on it. And when you come deep enough, that there was some really heavy stuff there, slavery and all kinds of stuff. But that was so heavy, it couldn't be confronted initially. You know, they got to be kind of warmed up um, to, you know, the dark side. And, you know, other layers had to be cleared first, you know, before this one could be accessed. You know, you can't just fight huge battles <laughs> of realization, you know, being a novice, you know, get used to the small stuff first. Yeah. So, um, do you carry unnecessary guilt around you, feeling responsible, you know, for failing to heal your clients, yes or no? And let's have that guilt clear. You know, guilt doesn't do anything good. You know, please clear so. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, use this energy and make us enthusiastic in widening our horizon in, in finding out the root cause, you know, of these things that we did not understand before. Much better. Amen, amen, amen. And of course, you know, any time you are a healer or in contact, you know, with the public, especially as a hairdresser or, you know, other places where people start making, you know, heartbeat confessions, um, but especially as a healer when you go into past lifetimes. You know, I mean, of course, I have to go to where the action was, you know, where the curses were, where the trauma was. And that is not a pretty sight. You know, that is not pretty, you know, witnessing how kingdoms went down, you know, how dynasty <laughs> got cursed. <and laughs> and people suffered, see, so and have to cuff their mouth. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, um, just uh, constantly, you know, um, dealing with the dark side, you know. Um, so, unless you have you know, a lot of love of source, you know, you kind know, of as a counteractive, you know, it's uh, very harsh for me. And um, so, and people get depressed you know, and get a skewed outlook on reality. You know, don't sniff the flowers anymore, so to say. But please clear any unnecessary memories and distortions and discordant emotions that we still carry around from witnessing dark realities. Amen. 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 So there are, of course, also, you know, different ways through which healings are done. So, you know, some of the most miraculous healings that I have performed, you know, was like basically in this kind of just left the body <laughs> of the client or several did, and probably from different lifetimes, you know, where there was harm done to this body part that was ailing and you know, the symptoms just, some of them with the neck that disappeared on the spot. Of course, we probably, you know, bone growth and whatever had to catch up. Um, you know, um, but this is possible, of course, you know, taken 
you know, the skill would be there, you know, releasing the ghosts, you know, and then the spirit guides would adjust the force field. So it's not really us that we're doing. But, um, you know, sometimes um, we use our own energy to remove blocks or to fight, mm -hmm. or to just give benedictions. You know? So I had um, one client, you know, who was suffering a lot, and a lot of so-called bad luck. In, in a past lifetime, you know, this person was a guru, you know, and everybody, you know, came to this guru and asked, you know, oh, you know, I want to be happy, married, you know, and he, okay, this will happen. You know, I, I want to be rich and prosperous, yes, you know, I want to be pretty, I want to have three kids, and he would, you know, give these benedictions, and of course there were karmic lessons for those people, you know, to be learned, and while well, he basically overwrite this and he paid, you know, with the austerities that he had performed in this lifetime or in past lifetimes. You know, of course, you get brownie points for this. So he just passed those, uh, you know. So, <laughs> so basically my client, you know, was still paying off the credit card, the Kami credit card that this saint, you know, and didn't know, you know, he was burning up his personal credit card. Mm -hmm by giving those kind of benedictions, you know, to the clients. So, have we done so in this or past lifetime? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. So, you know, let's apologize to all those beings, you know, whose karmic lesson we have taken away by our foolish benedictions. Um, we are like to have that karma be cleared from them and us. And also we like to have, you know, our energies back, so we can use them properly now. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah, starting to feel better now. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, the real way, I think, as a healer, uh, is kind of working as a, maybe, contractor and attorney. You know? <laughs> of course, uh, you know, that's, of course, the church was, you know, accused of being, you know, the middleman between, you know, God and the people. Well, uh, you know, sometimes <laughs> you don't know who to talk with. Yeah, talk to God. You know? But, uh, you know, um, sometimes you need a contractor or an attorney. You know, to make it through the jungle there. Um, you know, and also you should be aligned, you know, with the divine will. Otherwise, if you use your human intelligence, oh my God, you know, if you lead somebody down the wrong path that's not meant for them, again, you know, you get karmically entangled. So wherever we did this, we apologized to the beings, you know, that we again didn't help properly and you like to have that karma cleared and the guilt cleared around this uh, uh, now another thing you know when you take credit for what you did as a healer um you know, instead of, ah, well, God did it, or Jesus did it, <laughs> you know, or the person was ready to do it. Mm -hmm. um, not like, you know, um, the more you can actually um, also you know, get slammed with the karma. Of this. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not a good thing to take credit. Mm -hmm. It's better, you know, to, to have other beings handle all the business, all the fighting, all the clearing, as well as, you know, give them the credit. <laughs> I'm just an instrument. You know, that's probably the best answer. You know, I'm just an instrument. And if you're an instrument to the divine, it's an awesome feeling. It's awesome. You know, then you feel fulfilled in your life. Mm -hmm. So, uh... You don't have to wear sandals for this, <laughs> or robe, or drag. Right? <laughs> um, so wherever, you know, we still taking credit, 
you know, where it's not due, you know, where we didn't do it, and we like to have this cleansed now, mm -hmm. and so we give proper credit, so more love, more healing can flow through us, and our egos don't get us all twisted out. Amen, amen, amen. Now, um, when we look back in history, um, you know, sometimes we, we just have to shake our head and uh, think, well, um, you know, here the healers, you know, they went way out of line. You know, what happened here? This is crude. As an example, um, you know, bloodletting was a huge um, you know, medical procedure, you know, used in a certain time, you know, till a couple hundred years ago, I would say. Maybe even the 19th century, they still use bloodletting. And then, of course, also mercury you know, and was administered, you know, quite profusely um, against all kinds of things. You know, and I think the latest it was the syphilis. And um, so that were, you know, complete misconception. I mean, everybody, you know, knowing a little bit about medicine, you know, knows about this. So when um, we ask, you know, the divine spirit, so what was going on here? You know, uh, what was the um, pollution here? Um, you know, why the bloodletting? And we were shown, you know, all these vampiristic beings, you know, sucking on this blood, you know, living out that life force. Aha, so this was a blood ceremony, basically, that was done. And then, you know, how about the mercury? And the answer was, do you think that the greys didn't have high tech 500 years ago? Yeah, you know, this was the easiest and only way to get metals into the population, you know, so they would resonate better with their gear. Yeah. You know, so um, I just take this as a cool example. <laughs> you know, first of all, stuff I discover in my past lifetimes, but also stuff this can happen to you. Uh, and uh, you know so let, that's why we ask um, have we been you know plagued by misconceptions uh, first of all in our healing practice nowadays yes or no mm -hmm. and if yes so we like to have this cleared and of course also from past lifetimes any indoctrination any karma you know just following the status quo we like to have cleared now and any subjects that got stuck due to this mistreatment help, sent help. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah, and another biggie, you know, about healers. Oh, this is shaman style, let's call it. Um, technique, you know, where the healer absorbs the dark chi from the subject, you know, and transmutes and clears it. And um, <coughs> let's, um, as an example, you know, you can see many times that through the, the shaman, through the breath, you know, pulls off the chi. Of course, you know, some also use smudge and, and eagle feathers and other, you know, um, feathers that are moving chi very well. Uh, and so you pull this into your body and then of course you're supposed to expel it or transmute it, you know. And so a shaman, you know, should definitely, or a yogi, you know, be really good at transmuting this stuff. So what made I've killed, and you know, um, Billy Bob, you know, um, the shaman maybe is sick for a week or for a month to transmute this. You know, so this has been, you know, pretty much a bread and butter in many traditions. And, of course, we also absorb dark chi again through proximity. Uh, so, of course, the problem is there's always something getting stuck. <laughs> and, you know, or not completely released. You know, especially, you know, if it's done unskillfully or not even aware. Um, so, question is... Do you still have a lot of stuff, you know, from other people stuck with you? Yes or no? Yeah, we asked spirit guides, hi self, to please, please, please clear this now as good and as much as possible. 
Now, there are some people that are saying that about 50% of the light workers that incarnated got killed and tortured, you know, basically persecuted. Yeah, I think this probably was in the human culture, you know, and probably also when you have in like uh, large religions. I don't think this happened to shamans in indigenous culture, you know, they were taken off a few family, of a few a small village. I don't think it happened there, but once you had so-called corporate, you know, state religions, you know, with the priesthood, and then you had the freelance. <laughs> um, once, you know, then these got persecuted, you know, especially when the, you know, established priesthood was influenced by the dark side, by the Draco. Um, you know, from a bigger uh, perspective, you know, in the uh, let's say in the Christ you know, got crucified. You know, the Christ you know was sent here. You know, love and light from source you know was brought here, and the dark side you know crucified it. You know? So it wasn't just the Christ you know that got crucified. You know, all the light bringers basically that came to earth, you know, had got identified and crucified, you know, not necessarily on a cross, but tortured, cursed, you know, persecuted in, in so many ways, or pushed into the underground. Mm -hmm. So there's a tremendous amount of karma, you know, from there. You might actually feel quite heavy, <laughs> you know, around your heart, around your tummy area. In other parts of the body, you know, depending on the trauma. Uh, but um, let's first of all start real simple. Have you been killed as a light worker in past lifetimes? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. And um, so let's just ask that those people, those demonic beings, that, that this is definitely not in divine justice law on that they be brought to the courts of divine justice and that those aspects of you and your loved ones and your ancestors that got trapped and killed and persecuted like this and tortured like this and cursed like this and done ceremonies you know to shut them down we like to have them all brought into the healing chambers divine healing chambers of love and light healed through forgiveness love the best experts and then brought into what we consider heavens, the light, the highest and best. Uh, um, you know, be very, very sure about it mm -hmm. and just send as much love as you can. Bring in love, bring in love, bring in love. This may feel very heavy right now, you need that love. Mm -hmm. And of course, as they're leaving, uh, we like to have. <laughs> all their curses first of all the curses that were put onto them many times you know when they were burned as witches and sorcerers i mean the ones that were innocent you know they were definitely dark witches and sorcerers definitely they were that sacrificed and ate babies and definitely they were there uh, but the ones you know that got fingered from and didn't do it you know that's the thing so we like to clear, you know, also all the, we ask that those curses be cleared from them, not just from the church and the status quo, from those magicians, mm -hmm. but also from the people, you know, the ignorant masses, you know, that just, you know, hated the outsider. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. And just this is gonna continue for a little while. Now the other thing that's really important is, you know, when you were like in a past lifetime, um, in a cauldron getting cooked or getting dunked or um, getting burned, 
you know, and you had been a good person, you know, saving a lot of lives, and these people turned you in as a witch or as a sorcerer because you know what you did worked. And, you know, you cursed them. <laughs> Big time. You know, you were very angry. I mean, you know, pain does this to you. Betrayal does this to you. You know, many times your kids were involved, your family got destroyed. I mean, you got tortured, raped, you know, all kinds of stuff, shamed. Mm -hmm. You cursed those people. You cursed the clergy that did this to you. You know, you cursed the village that didn't support you. You cursed God, you know, for letting this happen, for not protecting you. Guaranteed, you know, I mean, a lot of them did, you know, and there were very few that did not. Of course, they all understand. <laughs> you know, God definitely understands. So, you know, you didn't have the understanding, you know, and it's kind of rough, you know, to, um, you know, to see, you know, why this happened, why this was volunteered for, etc. So anyhow, you like to have these curses and spells towards God and towards the other people cleared. You know, first of all, the curses to God, they just really, you know, screw up your relationship with source. Uh -huh. And then also the, you know, let's have those cleared first. Amen, amen, amen. And then on top of it, of course, um, you know, cursing those people, um, that means you have to reincarnate with them, you know, as their brother, you know, your boss, or, you know, their work for you as your kids, or your lovers, and, you know, witness them uh, suffering. <laughs> and the kicker is, of course, many times you're on their side, but at least you're bound to them, so. You know, and you don't want to do this being reincarnated, you know, with those <coughs> right, reasons for abortions, right? So um, let's, um, you know, have those curses also cleared and give them over to divine justice now. And then, of course, also the vows of revenge. Mm. And sometimes when our clients uh, died, you know, and that wasn't necessarily our fault, I mean, it was never our fault, um, their ghost attached to us, maybe we accepted them even out of guilt, or sometimes they were bound, you know, from people, or sometimes even the healer was killed. You know, hey, you didn't do it like gangster style, you know, when we heal this one or we kill you and your family. You know, just to inspire you in your best efforts. And, you know, they had this quite a lot. <laughs> then they got whacked. Mm -hmm. So those aspects we like to have also cleared, you know. And then, of course, their vows not to do this anymore, not to be in the healing practices anymore. Mm -hmm. Let's have this clear too. Amen, amen, amen. And then brought to the heavens. We keep on smiling and running love. And uh, you might also have been, or you or your ancestors, one of those ignorant bastards, you know, that got paranoid and turned a nice midwife, you know, over as a witch and got her killed. Mm -hmm. Or maybe even, you know, took over her little farm. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if this happened, we asked for forgiveness and we asked that those poor people also be brought to the Ascension temples, be healed, help us forgiveness be brought to heaven and the dispels and curses be cleared. Amen, amen, amen. Yep, don't think you were always on a good side. And let's ask for a little blessing so humor definitely helps. You know, Patch Adams, you know, there was this movie about him, you know, definitely an example. I met the person personally, he made me giggle and laugh, I nearly fell off a chair. So, I mean, I use it uh, quite a lot in my sessions. I mean, you wouldn't believe how much we giggle and laugh. <laughs> yeah, um, so, you know, if you are a healer, you know, just ask for the 
gift of humor. You know, it's a lubricant. You know, it just really helps people to transmute so much plastic. You know, it's all this good endorphins and other drugs you know, that are being released. You know, when you laugh, painkillers, mm -hmm. stimulants. Yep. Now, of course, if you're kind of a healer of any type in this lifetime, you probably did so in the past lifetime. Mm -hmm. And so, let's deal with some of those vows you know, from those lifetimes. So, many times, um, like the healers, like shamans or healer women, they lived outside society. Sometimes this was just a custom, and of course, many times they preferred so. <laughs> you know, doing their own business, you know, not you know, getting involved in, you know, neighborhood, you know, um, tragedy <laughs> and gossip. So, you know, but uh, many times this was, you know, vows or, you know, just a habit, you know, to be reclusive. You now in, in this lifetime, if you may wonder, you know, while you don't have any friends. So, you know, if there's still any aspects, you know, just kind of it's like that stuck. You know, or that they made vows or strong thought forms, you know, that they have to be by themselves, to be proper functioning, be like they have this cleared, if it's for our highest good. Um. Also, um, in many traditions, um, the healers, and, you know, in shamans and brahmanas, this means the people of strong mental power, there was an ethos or morality of renunciation. You know, so they would not misuse their power. And, and just, you know, their mystical powers, um, you accumulate personal wealth and ego for self incarnation. You know? In um, like, like starting to dress like a drag queens, for example. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a Brahmana, you know, was supposed to be very clean and very renounced. Mm -hmm. And to live a very uh, moral life. So, um, do we still have vows and customs um, from those incarnations? Yes or no? And we like to have this clear too now. Um, um, you know, this is a cultural thing. We have a different culture now, so money is needed to go to conferences, to do books, to get proper gear you know, for your podcast, etc. Now another big kicker, you know, that most of you don't know. <laughs> so, you know, shamans in the different traditions, um, they have a lot of life force, a lot of power, so to say. And so, um, you know, they got hunted um, by people that were just, um, you know, accumulating power. And, and I mean, a real black magician or sorcerer, you know, will try to steal the power, you know, from other more powerful people. You know why a mess with peasants? <laughs> you know, if you can have, you know, super sharks, exquisite energy, you know, from nobility or from a, a, a healer. Right? Um, so, and I've seen it. Um, you know, that a Native American shaman were hunted by a Native American shaman that was possessed by demonic beings. And I've seen the same thing of a Viking. You know, that Viking, I think he killed 80 Viking shamans. 80. You know? Can you imagine killing Viking shamans, hunting Viking shamans? It's like, well, you know, as a profession, I rob gun stores because they're too embarrassed to call the cops. Right? And this is something like that. You know, so that is how ballsy um, these were. Um, so, um, do we still have any aspects of ourself that got hunted 
you know, as shamans are powerful healers and harvested like that, as a blood bag, so to say. Yes or no. Yeah, and we like to have them all liberated. Pretty, pretty, please. All liberated, big time. Mm -hmm. And cleared you know, and returned to their soul groups. Powers restored. Make it as new, collapsed as timeline. Perpetrators take to the courts of divine justice so they can forgive. Amen, amen, amen. And uh, were you also like a dark magician, um, like a vampire, you know, um, hunting um, powerful beings before loose for astral food? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. and we apologize and we like to have these aspects brought to the courts of divine justice and healing uh -huh, so they can be transmuted into love and light again. And their victims brought to the Arcturian love healing and ascension temples reunited with lost loved ones and also moved on, you know, healed from all the trauma. We give permissions. Amen, amen, amen. So many clients of mine have been incarnated in Atlantis, of course in Egypt, you know, in the time when it was happening there. And so in Atlantis, um, these were not normal humans. You know, they were much larger, they had uh, elongated skulls, they had bigger brain, they had more mystical abilities, they were living on a much higher frequency. Mm -hmm. They're very superior in so many ways to the modern human, at least as we know it right now. You know, normal modern human, the vacant, it's a different story. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, in the Atlantis culture, you know, there was also a lot of cultural exchange, you could say, with ETs, you know, benevolent extraterrestrials. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, some darkies probably slipped in there too. <clears throat> So what happened, and I've seen it in many past life regressions, that uh, many of these Atlanteans, as well as these light-bringing ETs, got kidnapped by the Draco, by the Alpha Draconians, the Rakshashas, you know, the Hindus would say. And for instance, you know, Sita being, you know, abducted, you know, Sita, Ram's wife and concert, being abducted by Dracos, by Rakshashas. You know, um, that's so common. You know, so many of my clients, you know, got abducted and they're not living in a palace. You know, they're going into some, re you know, rejuvenation that they're going into holding tanks. They get experimented on or their life force gets siphoned on and other incarnations get influenced, you know, through this body, through the DNA. You know, so dark magic is being to them. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, so, <laughs> have you been um, kidnapped, you know, in the Atlantean time frame as an ET or as an Atlantean and you're still being harvested, yes or no? Mm -hmm. So, and if you were, you know, we asked Archangel Michael and the other beings of Love and Light that vastly outrank, you know, those that kidnapped you to come and liberate these aspects and bring them to the healing temples for ascension and take perpetrators to the cause of divine justice and collapse those timelines for the highest good. Amen, amen, amen. All right, and as we are with Atlantis now, guys, this is so cool. So there were several cataclysmic events, you know, not just one big one. There were many, you know, I think four major ones, and of course more like also piddly stuff, you know, tsunami here and there. Um, but the point being, um, I've come now several times across that when these tsunamis happened, um, there were um, spaceships there, you could say UFOs, um, and they were picking up those subtle bodies, those souls, 
you know, who were of those people that were drowning. So um, I know of some, you know, that were put into, you know, just switched over into a body of a mermaid, you know, something that, you know, could live in the water. And I have to say, this one person really did not like it. <laughs> the Atlantean being in a mermaid body. Ah, they put me in a mermaid body. Ugh. She hated it. And, and, and mermaid, they're pretty nice people. And um, so, um, but I think, you know, a lot of them also just got snatched, you know, for piracy and kidnapping. Hmm? Let's ask them where aspects of you, you know, kidnapped in any cataclysmic events like wars, but especially the big ones. Yes or no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, similarly, we ask the divine forces like Archangel Michael, you know, the other upholders of justice to, you know, bust those kidnappers now, track them down, take them to the courts of divine justice and liberate all their victims, bring them to the ascension temples for healing. You know, of course, especially our aspects that we can speak for, you know, our own incarnations, our ancestors, our friends, you know, whoever we can speak for. Um, uh, um, um. Well, another thing, you know, whether you're a healer or yoga teacher or maybe just a teacher or a barkeep, <laughs> you know, it will happen that uh, people start adoring you, you know, putting you on a pedestal, you know, as if you're bigger or better than other people. And, um, you know, of course, they only see you, first of all, you know, when you're in character, you know, not, you know, when you're shuffling in the morning to the bathroom. And um, so, you know, there is uh, the tendency, of course, you know, of these kind of adoration. And uh, that can, you know, really, you know, get out of hand, you know. So, I, a colleague of mine, you know, was stalked by a client and that was a huge drama. I mean, even the FBI <laughs> was involved. <laughs> and, you know, she had to sell a house and, you know, wipe her presence from the internet. You know, so um, this can go really south. Okay? So, um, I mean, with, with her, everything worked out for the best, really, for the best. You know, no worries. Uh, but, you know, being as a healer, Mr. or Mrs. Unobtainable, or the ideal, you know, character, um, you know, is uh, definitely a pattern. But definitely check, you know, are your farts already smelling like roses? Mm -hmm. So anyhow, um, you know, from these kind of relationships, there can be chords, attachments, expectations, uh, projections, you know, and other things that uh, may become a drag, you know, on your force field that is really not necessary. Mm -hmm. Are you affected by this? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. And we like to have this pretty much cleared now. Um, 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 you know, with kindness, with compassion, but clear. Uh -huh. If they get their love from us, you know, we like to have them rerouted to source. Um, 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 you know, without the intermediary. Now another thing is, um, you know, when especially if you have a lot of followers, let's not call them disciples, you know, um, I call them clients, mm -hmm. um, you can get a guru complex, <laughs> you know, as if you had been lowered by a certain threat, you know, from the heavens as a blessing to mankind. Um, but, um, you know, we have to be, you know, aware that you are an instrument. You know, just like a channel, you know, um, that uh, you are a servant of the divine. You know? This is not you that is really doing this. You may be facilitating, you know, you are the transistor, you're not the radio. <laughs> that's, um, 
and uh, you know um, so when you get um, praised you know and loved you know um, pass it on to those that work through you and do all the heavy lifting you know this is more reality in that way you clear any contamination by your ego you know and this can really this can happen you know and then you start wearing drag yeah. um, so uh, let's have fun, you know all these um, aberration of the ego you know where we taken you know um, the cuties we getting here the brownie points as personal you know we like to have those misunderstandings cleared now mm -hmm. um, 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 um. And of course, you know, especially when you start working with past lifetimes, uh, you know, you uh, come around clients where you have personal past lifetimes. With, you know, this will come into your life. Actually, probably once you start looking into your life, you know, from the perspective of past lifetimes, you, know, you most likely had a lot of past life relationships with all of your co-workers, with all of your family members. It would be quite we are not having a relationship with them. You know, if you start you know, analyzing everything. Uh, but, you know, so this can happen that, um, or will happen sooner or later, that, uh, you know, <laughs> Um, that you were involved. You know, for instance, I had um, one client, uh, lots of bad luck, highly qualified, tons of bad luck, everything went wrong. And when I went back, you know, this was an emperor. And, um, you know, quite a cruel one, you know, one of those Roman emperors, you know, living in luxury, you know, being completely immoral. And um, this one got cursed. You know heavily for the deeds you know that's where all the suffering and then um you know i asked him what was the heaviest curse for you know there's always a reason that somebody gets really ticked off you know, to curse somebody really heavy and um you know um, well this emperor you know for personal entertainment he had um, you know um, two gladiators you know one against one show up at his palace for personal entertainment you know, as if you're ordering a stripper to come home. Of course, you know, those guys had to kill each other, you know, just for his personal entertainment. They didn't even get the glory of, you know, dying in front of a big arena. This was taken away from them. And he was doing this quite a lot. And, no, actually. So, you know, then something, you know, an alarm bang ran with me. And, you know, because I know that I trained Gladiator in past life. You know, and I asked, huh, was I involved in this? And I got a big yes. And I also know that I was a mystic, you know, as a gladiator tree. And um, I asked, did I curse this emperor? <laughs> and I got a big yes. So yeah, the emperor didn't last long. And of course, you know, this was about 2000 years of suffering. And so when I asked, you know, so basically, you know, this person had paid the price in personal suffering, you know, over the years, and it was time to clear this, you know, and I did. And, um, well, um, you know, so much for that. And of course, uh, many times, you know, you find ex-lovers, you know, uh, wives, husbands, you know, they all come back into your life because you all made promises to see each other. You know, so in what better way, <laughs> you know, I'm sitting at home, you know, what better way can you uh, meet other people, you know, than through your clients, you know, unless, you know, are you talking to strangers in the grocery store? Probably not. Now, um, you know, meeting those people can lead to all kinds of experience. You know, I'm not necessarily saying that they're going to be all sitting in your bushes with camouflage, you know, stalking you. Um, but, um, you know, this can lead to telepathic contact. Especially when they're telepathic, you are telepathic, and then 
uh, the connection is made, you know, suddenly they're in your mind. I mean, you know, I had this, you know, also, yeah, with clients, you know, and not necessarily ex-lover. <laughs> I just, I think this was just a very powerful woman, but very negative and constantly, you know, she was, I hear in my mind, you know, um, out finding with me. <laughs> so that is, uh, I think, one of the only few times where I fired a client. <laughs> So, and anyhow, you know, when there is a telepathic contact, and of course, as a healer, you know, you're supposed to have a lot of love and light, you know, or as a yoga teacher, you know, as a yogi. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there can, a lot of things can happen, and, you know, many people think that their healer is their twin flame. You know, and then, of course, they also think that, you know, twin flame is, you know, your ticket to happiness. Um, <laughs> which may be a misunderstanding, right? So, um, you know, we like to have any misconceptions, you know, we, we misidentify certain things with our clients, cleared also any dark karmas that are still there. Amen, 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 as much as possible now. Amen. And there's quite a lot to clear there, and um, sometimes when you, um, maybe with a client, maybe this, you know, as an empath, this happened to you too, that you um, experience very extreme emotions, maybe even pains, heart pain, liver pain, heart pain generally for me, you know, it's either murder or broken heart, liver pain is generally anger, lower, lower, lower chakra pain is mostly sexual and survival. But um, you know, when you experience really strong emotions, um, you may have been personally involved. Mm -hmm. So it's always a good question, you know, was I personally involved? That's asked a question. Are there any aspects, you know, that got triggered, you know, with you working with your clients from past lifetimes, either from your clients or from you that are still stuck, discarnates? Mm -hmm. Yes or no. And we like to have them send all the helps, bring them to the Arcturian La Feeling and Ascension Temple, and give them the treatment. Um. Uh, well, one funny client, you know, said that, um, you know, as a healer, you are like a spiritual porn star. Well, I mean, healers can definitely get plugged you know, by needy people, and, um, you know, whether they are admirers, you know, or whether they are envious people, or whether they are just vampires, <laughs> but uh, we definitely give permission, you know, to our high self and to our spirit guides to please clear, you know, all these uh, connections, cords, portals, you know, through which our energies are being vampires. You know, and we like to have them purified and actually return to us in the most auspicious way now. Uh, uh, uh. And, you know, uh, many times, uh, you might say, when you poke around in past lifetimes with your clients, and, you know, find out what happened to them, you know, how they got into this trouble, you might find something where you think, hmm, and they, I never got across this before. You know, this might also apply to me. And, you know, in my mind, I, you know, ask my guides, you know, to do the same thing for me, you know, clear the same thing for me. So I, I get a lot of hearing from that. <laughs> uh, 
a lot of clearing from this. So, um, and of course, this um, you know this uh, quite intense. Now you know this is just like a roller coaster, and I'm not saying up and down. I mean the intensity. Okay? And just you know of your life, you know what you experience, and not just the emotion and pain and lifetimes, you know, but then also the personal purification and everything else has to follow your body, you know, your environment. It is also, you know, all your, your philosophical insight. You know, this is all quite intense. And so we pray that we clear the fear around these intense emotions and transitions. You know, whenever there's change, there's fear. And that we start enjoying this, you know, like a roller coaster. You know, people do not go there, you know, to be horrified and to misalign their spine. You know, they go there to have a thrill, you know, let it out, let it rip, you know, enjoy it, you know, it tickles you, you know, it jacks your adrenaline up, you know, so we ask that we be reprogrammed, you know, from fear to enjoying it. Um, uh, um. So, um, before I talked about, you know, that we heal us just like the cosmic Christ, you know, gets crucified here on this planet, you know, lifetime after lifetime. And um, so this is time, you know, where this stops. <laughs> Especially, you know, with all the light coming in through the cosmic alignments. So, you know, um, I give permission and I request um, that um, all these aspects of me that came here to heal, that came here, you know, to do the business of the cosmic Christ, you know, that got so-called crucified, attacked, cursed, you know, put into bad karmic situations, mm -hmm. that these be liberated now and brought to the Arcturian life healing and ascension temples, and to be brought into the love and light, and that persecutors mm -hmm, be taken to the courts of divine justice and that their influence on this realm be removed. Um, um, um. And of course, you know, the healers, they don't just come out of nothing. You know, healers are born into bloodlines. You know, where the women were seers, where healers, they had abilities and so on, or the men had. Mm -hmm. You know, these are bloodlines, you know, where there is a lot of good ET blood there. Mm -hmm. And, um, of course, um, again, you know, this is the cosmic Christ only, and they have been, you know, tracked and attacked throughout the time. Mm -hmm. And they're also, you know, great food for vampiristic beings, you know, very choice cheat, you know, very choice, in, you know, life force. It's like a fine wine. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, so we like to have those aspects, you know, of our bloodline, you know, that are used, you know, for the vampiristic ways and also that's being stunted. Uh -huh. We like to have those all liberated and persecutors, and perpetrators brought to the courts of divine justice now. Amen, amen, amen. Now, also as healers, you know, anybody that transmits energy, you know, to others, whether it's a massage therapist, Reiki, you know, even as a good hairdresser, you, as a hairdresser, start giving head massages to your clients. <laughs> Try it out. <laughs> you know, a nice, quick head massage, you know, makes them buzz. So anyhow, you know, and we all, you know, run life force, you know, through us. And, you know, especially as yogis, or Reiki masters. So, and of course, you know, running this much account through you, you know, also creates a little wear and tear on your system. And, you know, there might be, you know, stuff that's 
also kind of overworked or blocked. Mm -hmm. And also you can really increase your potency if you not only run it through you, you know, but over you, you know, besides just commanding you. So, but over you is the next step up, you know, be, besides running through you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you run stuff over you, you can run way more chi, you know, with the same level of purity and wear and tear on your body, on your subtle body, than, you know, somebody that's, you know, a lot purer, you know, <laughs> or than the same level of purity running it through themselves. You know, quite important. So we asked that our energy pathways now be optimized, you know, to run, you know, much higher capacity of love and light through us. Mm, then before that all these obstructions, you know, misdirections and wrong ideas about running love be cleared now mm, and replaced by perfect concepts and techniques. Amen. Um, uh, uh, give permission, let them, you know, work out the details. <laughs> And, um, you know, in many lifetimes, um, there was also kind of like a burnout. You know, there's just too much chi, you know, ran through the body. You know, this could have been magic, this could have been entity possession. You know, it ha also happens for healing, you know, not just demonic beings jumping into you. Um, you know, this could be for all kinds of reasons. You know, even, you know, excessive drug use. You know, and you kind of stoned all the time, so to say. Mm -hmm. So we like to have, you know, any pathways, you know, and damage to our subtle bodies, you know, to these intense um, light forces that went through us as healers. Yeah, and mystics, we like to have this repaired now. The aspects of us that are still stuck around these issues brought to the heavens. Um, um, Now, believe it or not, but, um, you know, when we uh, worked as a healer, then maybe 50% got killed. Anyhow, there was a lot of karma and vows you know, around being a healer. Like, you know, I'm never going to do this again. <laughs> I'm never going to do this again. You know, you help people heal and it works so good that they think it's a devil. Next thing is you are, you know, being slowly cooked over a fire while the whole village is jeering at you, throwing, you know, um, rotten produce at you. Uh, so we do certain vows there, you know, of not doing it again, and this interferes, of course, you know, with this lifetime healing. So we like to have those cleared now, and those aspects that get so angry, that got so mistreated, liberated, and brought to the heavens, was all their karma and pain cleared. Um, and, um, and, um. Yeah. So now what I also find out, you know, that in, uh, you know, when you danced out of line with the status quo, whether this was in, in India or in Egypt, or like in the, you know, uh, European um, church history, um, you not only got cursed or tortured and stuff like that, um, actually, no, you got cursed. You know? So they had um, cursed technology, you know, it was powerful stuff. So they had their own dark magicians, you know, you can't call that prayer, you know, wishing, you know, eternal damnations and limitations and sad suffering and whatever, you know, shutting down their crown chakras. And, you know, that was very demonic, what was done in the name of Jesus, I have to say. Very embarrassing for him. So um, we like to have, you know, these spells and curses, you know, from the status quo, you know, um, religious organization, the corporate you know, religions, we like to have this cleared from our bloodlines and healers. Um, um, um. And 
VVV or the status quo, you know, and we're pushing down on the others, feel like they have those spells and curses clear too. Amen, amen, amen. So and now, of course, you know, if you start to have potency as a healer, um, you know, the dark side, you know, doesn't like this, and it's not just only humans on the dark side that don't like this. There are other beings, you know. I mean, as there are angels, there are also, you know, beings of darkness, you know, that hate love, that hate light, that love pain, that love discord and so on, I mean, you know, the normal duality. And so these, they can put some pretty heavy obstacles in your life, you know, sometimes through contracts, you know, all kinds of tricks. Um, and, you know, they have all kinds of beings sometimes, you know, just um, dedicated to harassing you, you know, tearing you down, tempting you, making your stuff break down. You know, so you have to start, you know, very impeccable. But anyhow, so, um, you know, it's not a fair fight, so that's why we asked our spirit guides, you know, and also especially Lord Jesus, he's good with demons, and also the Archangel Michael, and Lord Masinga Dave, you know, Lord Vishnu, Lord Ganesh, you know, to clear out all those limitations, you know, into our highest path, you know, as a healer, and as a decent person. Um, um, and of course, you know, um, if you, you know, looking for obstacles in your life, you know, many, many people run embarrassing self-sabotage and self-punishment. You know, that's a big can of worms. And um, so, it's asked, you know, are you running on any of those in your life? Yes or no? Yeah. And let's just ask to have the cleared now as much as possible without, you know, having to look at the details. You know, we definitely you want to be effective, right? And why shoot yourself in the foot? Let's just cut that out. We asked that we be learning whatever lessons we have to learn in a much nicer way. Um, um, um. Now, in many lifetimes, um, you know, these healing arts had to go underground, you know, for, you know, reasons of being persecuted. But then, of course, uh, many times that was also like a trade secret, you know, or like a business. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, um, yeah, uh, like pharma <laughs> pharmacy, you know, um, so there were trade secrets and how to do things. Or, you know, there was a fear that, you know, these techniques would be abused, you know, for the dark side to do harm. And so there was a lot of, you know, um, swearing of secrecy, you know, done to masters that would teach things. Now, unfortunately, um, you know, in those times, this might have been applicable to those things, but not in this lifetime, necessary. We need all the help we can get. And so we ask those masters now, you know, to be kindly be absolved, you know, so we can uh, use, you know, these techniques that were secret, that had to be secret, you know, now for the public. If they have any problems, they can, you know, discuss this with the courts of divine justice and our other spirit guides and high self, you know, but we like to have that worked out, you know, for the higher spirit, you know, I mean, and of course, you know, we like to have only uh, that knowledge that is really for the good and best, you know, I think this can be arranged, uh, please do so now, so clear us from any unnecessary secrecy. Um, um, um. Uh, 
And so, you know, sometimes as a healer, uh, you know, the uh, problem, um, you know, that our client has, you know, comes from black magic. It's not necessarily always a solitary practitioner from a past lifetime or this lifetime that attacks. Ah, it's sometimes a whole coven or a whole group of people, you know, like a little gang. You know, and of course, they also interface, you know, with the astral arm, you know, demonic beings, etc. And you, as a healer, suddenly, you know, feel like the um, detective that has to take on the mob, or like the, you know, karate hero, you know, that has to take on the mob, you know, completely outnumbered, and so on. So, first of all, you know, we ask that. You know, we clear any unnecessary saver, you know, savior uh, programs that, uh, you know, basically lead us into self-destruction or certain death, you know, and that we only get, you know, what we can handle nicely. Um, um, but we also ask, you know, that we have, you know, our protection team, you know, um, bodyguards, you know, the whole nine yards for every level. You know, we give complete permission to completely monitor our energies mm -hmm, on all different levels you know, against intrusion and manipulation and attacks, you know, and take attackers to the courts of divine justice or just make them useless, whatever is the best way of doing it. Um, uh, um, Now another uh, you know thing for healers, you know, if they are you know are not just stuck to a system and you know, just doing the same same thing, uh, again, you know, you will discover, you know, that you um, exist in other dimensions. <coughs> and as I said before, and sometimes, you know, I ask them, um, hey, was there part in this lifetime? And then, you know, you uh, get a, you know, you get a yes, you know, of what were you, and maybe I was a bodyguard, I was a teacher, I was a rival, or a lover. And um, so, of course, these have to be cleared and integrated, so all those aspects, you know, if you have any of them floating around, you know, with clients, again, that got triggered, let's have those cleared. Um, But then also you might find um, that you were involved, incarnated in other races, you know, that are quite mind-blowing. They're like, oh, I've seen animals, you know, even dinosaurs. Of course, there was in the past um, Anunnaki, or oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. And then we have demigods, you know, that would be like the Olympian guys, you know, or um, the Hindu gods, and then, you know, also gods, you know, of course, this is a sliding scale, um, and, um, you know, other beings, you know, Jesus, Mary, I mean, you know, it's Mother Mary shows up all the time. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but um, you um, start encountering you know, all these beings, and, um, you know, um, Sometimes you may feel like a dog, you know, from the countryside that is lost at the downtown, you know, New York Rayon bus terminal. You know, this means you're very confused, you don't know what to do, you don't know what to trust, you know, and what is the right behavior. So, in this case, you know, we ask that, you know, your own highest ranking soul aspect, you know, or source, you know, um, Will step into you and support you and guide you, and you know what's always good: blast as much love as you can. Yeah. And uh, you know, last your high self right now. How is this done? So let's have your high self we'll blast some love into you. Uh -huh. Uh, 
uh, thank you. This can continue, right? And while we clearing and while we get charged up with love, we ask that um, you know um, any aspects of you that maybe got stuck interacting with some of those gods <laughs> in some way, maybe offended them, maybe did stupid contracts, you know, or whatever, or got uh, a sacrifice to them happened on and on. We ask that they all be liberated and let the baggage be cleared, you know, contact, etc. Um, um. And now we ask Divine Spirit to please send any stuck aspects, you know, where we were healers, who are involved with healers. Hmm? that are stuck due to um, trauma and of any kind, mm -hmm. also from our bloodlines and ancestors, mm -hmm. to the actual in love healing at the Ascension Temples. Mm -hmm. Today we unite them with lost loved ones that are still stuck on the astral plane too, you know, like lost babies, etc. Also liberate any discarnates that got stuck in false light heaven. And or maybe false contracts and other bindings. And then show them the higher as well as the hidden aspects of their incarnations. Uh, and this would mean what was karma, what was volunteered for experience, mm -hmm. and what was sabotaged by the dark side, and then help us forgiveness. And then once they forgive and ask for forgiveness, we ask absolute souls to please make also any hidden stuff visible, remove any cloaking spells and technologies, any camouflage, make visible and expose what is trickery, misdirection, hidden agenda or legalese fine prints and have all the offenders brought to the courts of divine justice. Um, um. Also clear any entanglement that still binds them, like trauma, vows, curses, bindings, love spells or other technologies, any kind of crazy spells, glamours, deals, promises, contracts, candle magic, black magic, and any forms of bombs, booby traps, claws, hooks, cords, chains, shackles, crown of thorns, crucifixion implants, and everything else that was not mentioned but needs to leave our space at this time. Um, um. Also, remove any hitchhiking entities that have attached to us. And return any valuable energies that got stolen from us or that were squandered away during healings. Um, And now, please return any soul fragments that can reunite it with us, uh -huh. to us, update, synergize, heal, and bring to optimal energy levels, and then seal with the love and light of souls, make sure the dark side does not have access to us anymore, Amen. and one three, we are fully grounded back in vacant day consciousness again. Well, my friends, uh, welcome back to this reality. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, write your experiences in the comments. Mm -hmm. Check out all the other videos, you know, see what you're guided to. Drink a lot of water, take it easy. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to ask. I read the comments. Mm -hmm. 
and um, well, um, what can we say more for healers? Um, personally, um, I find uh, being a healer to be you know, the most rewarding aspect. You know, I traveled around the world. I've been you know, a cameraman. You know, I've been a photographer. I've now every aspect of the printing industry. I've seen a lot of things in my life a lot of profession and personally I, I think you know that of a healer you know it's a very very you know it beats that of being an artist and I like art you know? all the photography that you're seeing and doing you know the meditation you know is done by me just pretty recent in the last few years you know most of my stuff is still in archives somewhere and I couldn't save it or back up it. Anyhow, um, you know, feel free to contact me. My prices are very reasonable still. Just keep on smiling. Namaste. <laughs>